Boston Radio and New Hampshire's best sports. This is WGAM, the game. Welcome back, everybody, to the New England Golf Radio Show. I am JJ Truman. We are back or rather, with our second segment here. I want to give you a quick update on what's going on at the TPC players right now. Graham McDowell is in the lead. He is at he is at minus 13. He is on the 16th hole of the third round. David Tom's right behind him, minus 12 on the 15th hole. KJ Choi, Chris, that's your guy. KJ Choi, you picked him a couple uh, a couple weeks ago to win the win the Masters, I believe. Minus eleven, close. just finished his third round. Steve Stricker is in the hunt. He has the putter absolutely rolling. He's minus eleven as well. So a lot of guys and Luke Donald, Luke Donald, the possible world number one if he if he wins at minus ten. A lot of guys in the mix. A lot of golf to play. It's going to be fun to watch and see how that plays out this afternoon. We have on the line, as I said, Peter Loiko, the executive director of the First Tee. Peter, how you doing today? I'm great, JJ. How are you? I'm doing well, man. We're just working through our uh, second segment here. Glad to have you on the show. I know that you're the executive director of the First Tee in New Hampshire, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that everybody out there knows exactly what the First Tee is, what the First Tee does. So can you give us a little bit of insight into how it all works? Sure. Uh, the First Tee is a the national and international organization. Uh, I run the New Hampshire chapter. There's over 200 of them worldwide. Uh, what we do are a youth development program. We teach life skills and core values to children using the game of golf as a platform. So we, we use a great sport that teaches etiquette, sportsmanship, uh, various core values. Uh, we keep it fun for the kids, and uh, we try to make them be better people. Nice. So you, you, when you say a youth organization, now what ages are we talking about? How young can somebody bring somebody over to the first tee and have them train, or I guess it's not train, but have some fun and learn some core values with you? Because I know there's a lot of people out there that want to get the golf club in their kids' hands You know, at, at six months old. Is that okay to bring that kind of person over? So what? I guess the question is, what age group is, are you working with? Right. We start them out as young as five years old, and they can stay in the program all the way through 17. And so, so five to seventeen, and that—that's a quite a long period in somebody's life, and certainly one of the, one of youth's or, or youth's most influential years will be taking place. And using golf to teach them those core values is is something that's that's a great thing that you guys do. Now, where do you typically have these clinics? Uh, how how long do they last? And and how do you, if there's a theory, I guess that you use to sort of teach these core values through golf? How do you implement that with the young kids? Yeah, uh, our main location is at the Sagamore Golf Center over in Northampton. It's the Sagamore Driving Range on Route 1. Which, which I'm uh, sorry to cut you off, but they're not a sponsor. So, Sagamore, if you're out there listening today, you know, we got we have some sponsorship available, but go ahead. Yeah, and Richard Lafalone Sagamore has been a huge supporter of the First Tee. He was one of the founding uh, members of the First Tee of the Seacoast, which turned into the First Tee of New Hampshire. Richard and his staff just uh, treat us like kings over there and we're so glad to be there. Um, so at, at five years old, we start the kids out with plastic clubs and uh, Velcro tennis balls, and they hit into these big targets and swimming pools, and uh, we teach them things like uh, shaking hands with adults, meeting and greeting people, um, thinking about positive things, how they can get a ball airborne. So we keep it simple, but we keep it positive with those young kids. As they progress through the program, we go through different levels. So at five years old, we have a target level. The next level would be a player level, where we actually move to regular golf clubs. They're hitting short shots, maybe you know 30 to 50 yards into plastic swimming pools. At, during this time, though, we're teaching them the golf etiquette skills so that they can actually go out on the golf course with a parent or a coach mm-hmm. or what have you. And it gives them confidence, and it provides them uh, with the tools they need so that they can go out and play on a golf course, know what to do while they're out there, be quiet, be courteous, be respectful. And uh, that's what the core of the program is. Yeah, and that sounds like a blast. I want, I want to come over and hit some Sounds like balls. college. <laughs> it's really, really cool. <laughs> it's, I mean, if, if you come over and watch one class, you're hooked forever. Yeah, it, it sounds like a blast. These kids are. It, it, so it, it, as the kids progress... They not only have a blast, but there's a lot of opportunities. So they progress to a birdie level, an eagle level, and an ace level. And, for instance, uh, we have four eagle children 
who right now are in the application process for a big tournament that the first tee holds every year, which is uh, Nature Valley Open at Pebble Beach, which is a Champions Tour tournament. It will be on the July 4th weekend, and 70 people from across the country will be picked to go to that tournament. And the first tee in New Hampshire right now has four kids in the application process for that. Wow. We're hoping to get at least one of them in, and it would be the first time in our eight years that uh, one of our children would qualify. Well, that's very cool, Peter. I have a question uh, just because golf to me is a can, – well, it can be a very frustrating game. And uh, you miss <laughs> you miss a few shots in a row, and you start kind of getting down on yourself. I have to imagine that's like tenfold with – with young children. I mean, I know they're just kind of hitting with the plastic and it's just kind of going out and having fun, but do you see that? Do you see like these little angry guys getting, you know, like when they, <laughs> when they start clubs. missing shots? We do. Uh, one of the techniques we use is something we call STAR, which stands for stop, think, anticipate, and respond. I need to write that down. I'm you writing do. it down right now. You do. This is, it's an unbelievable technique. And when we talk to our older kids, that's the one technique that they always point out that they remember. And what that does is as they're ready to hit a shot or they just hit a shot and they're frustrated and they're ready to bang the club, they stop, they think, and they say, what does this mean to me? And then they respond. Now, the best part about that is they take that and it transitions into real life. So let's say they're in class and they get reprimanded or they're about to fight with one of their brothers or sisters. They take that home with them. And they use that technique to say, wait a minute, you know, let me take a step back here. And what it teaches is responsibility, courtesy, and respect. And it, that, that's, a, that's a great thing for everybody out there to, to think about when they're on the golf course and when they're off the golf course, for sure. I'm sure that if you took this program and implemented it with some PGA Tour players, maybe Rory Sabatini could benefit from using that strategy <laughs> here and there. You never know what you could do with this kind of program if you took it to the next level. Now, you said something about Pebble Beach, and you, my reaction was I perked up in my chair and I said, Pebble Beach? Now, these, these kids are going to have the opportunity to go play in this tournament at Pebble Beach. And what, what does that do for you guys as far as the first tee of New Hampshire? Does that give you some recognition? Does that give you some added funds? How does that all work? And, and what are they going out there to do besides represent you and show people around the country what a great job you've done with them? Yeah, well, what it does is it recognizes those children because they've worked hard. Many of these kids have been in our program since its founding. Mm-hmm. Okay, seven, eight years, have worked their way up. They come back and they give back to the first tee. They're always volunteering. Any event I have, they're the first to raise their hand. Uh, and in addition to that, they're great golfers. You know, right. they're all, you know, five handicap or below. Wow. Um, it just provides, you know, satisfaction to the kids, to the program, to the fundraisers, sure. all our supporters that, hey, we've got a program here that is not only teaching those core values to the young kids, we're progressing them. We're keeping the kids through the teenage years, and uh, really developing these kids into the future leaders of our nation. And and that's that's the important thing. And, and you notice that what Peter mentioned first was that they're great people, and that, that that's the important thing about the first team. Now, Peter, I want I want everybody to be clear about this. Now, do you have to pay for these lessons? Are these lessons free? Can you just sign up if you have a kid that's five to seventeen years old? How do you go about getting yourself involved in the first team program out there at Sagamore? Right. All the information is on our website, which is www.thefirsttnh.org. Mm-hmm. The classes run typically three days. For the target level, it's $35 for three days. For the player and above levels, it's $90 for three days. And then we do have some advanced courses, which uh, go uh, four full days, five hours a day. And those are a little bit more. Those might be in the area of 150 to 200 dollars. Right, and and all as he said, check it out on the website. But all reasonable prices compared to what you'd pay to go to a, a swing coach or go to a PGA professional like Drew Kaiser that we had on the other day. All very very reasonable prices to get that kind of instruction uh, for your child. And more importantly, to learn those core values, to learn how to stop, to think, and react to situations and deal with some adversity. I think it's a, it's an unbelievable idea. I know the first. First tee has been cropping up all over the country and is getting more and more notoriety. So, so congrats to you guys, and I think you guys are doing a great thing. Now, you guys have something Thank else you. going on this this weekend coming up. Not this weekend we're in right now, but the next weekend. You have an event somewhere, and I think it's at an unbelievable place, the Wentworth by the Sea. And if you haven't been out there to eat, hang out, and play golf, you need to check that place out. So what's going on out at the Wentworth? 
Yeah, uh, JJ, we are delighted to have the, the 2011 Handicap Cup return to Wentworth by the Sea uh, on uh, May 21st and 22nd. It'll be uh, 24 of the best LPGA women ever to play the game. Um, it'll be two days of match play. On Saturday, it will be uh, 18 holes, nine holes of uh, best ball, nine holes of alternate shot, where all 12 players on each team will be competing. On Sunday, it will be 12 matches of singles. They start around 10 o'clock in the morning on both days. Tickets are available at the door. All ticket proceeds go to the first tee of New Hampshire. They're very, very reasonable at $15 per ticket and two for $25. And like I say, that's just a donation to the first tee. Right, so the, uh, these these players are coming out to do this for for charity work. They're, a lot of them are legends in the game. So that leads me to ask you, who's the best player over there this this coming, or going to be over there this coming weekend? They're probably not in town yet. Maybe they'll show up a little early, play the course a little bit. But who's the best player over there this, this coming weekend? Well, we got five Hall of Famers. Uh, Nancy Lopez. Kathy Whitworth is the U.S. team captain. Our own New Hampshire's Pat Bradley, who played at Nash Shore Country Club. Patty Sheehan, Beth Daniel. Those folks uh, anchor the U.S. team. And from the international team, we got some incredible people, people like Laurie Kane from Canada, who's still competitive on the LPGA Tour. We've got a, a Swede, Lisa Let Neumann, who will uh, be here in the Handicap Cup for the first time. Everybody remembers Jan Stevenson when she was on the LPGA. Yes. She'll be 